How you going guys? It's um, back up in North Queensland again and I'm firing the Auspig up for another for another session just getting the old Hexi tablets going. I was watching SBS the other day with Roz and this lady called Nancy Fuller was on there and um, on some cooking show on the SBS and she did some sticky ribs and I thought I'm going to give them a crack in the camp oven and on the Auspig she did them in her kitchen on the in her oven and that, and I think anything you can do in the oven, you can do in a camp oven, surely. you just got to regulate your heat with the, the Auspeg. Now, I had all good intentions of my next cooking segment, guys, being out in the mountains with a nice stream in the background and all that stuff. Well, the weather's been atrocious, and in 10 minutes it can just be belting down rain. So I've come out to my next door neighbour's shed out in the back paddock here, and I've hijacked that in case it rains, because the last thing I want is the old Auspeg to copper downpour when I'm cooking some sticky ribs but um, I haven't had the Auspig going since winter time it's been too bloody hot to cook over these things but it's a bit of breeze around today and I thought oh, I'll get into these sticky ribs and give them a go so we'll call them buck sticky ribs I've never done them before but we'll give it a crack anyway I'll just get the Auspig going probably take 45 minutes or so for the, the wood and everything to get down to burning temperature get all some good coals and that going uh, obviously camp oven, the Auspig, and I'll take you through and show you exactly what we need ingredients wise. And guys, the ingredients for this is something you, you can carry it in your four wheel drive when you go out camping. And it's a one pot meal. Uh, that's what you want when you're out camping, one pot meal. So these ribs, I'll tell you what, if they look anything like or they turn out anything like they did on TV, they're going to be worth the effort, let me tell you. So anyway, we'll let this burn in. And while that's happening, I'll take you through and I'll show you the ingredients that you need for buck sticky ribs on the Auspeg. Rightio, pretty simple ingredients for the old um, sticky ribs, guys. Obviously, the, the main part, it wouldn't be ribs if you didn't have ribs. Now, I suppose you could do this with pork, but I'm going to do it with um, beef ribs. You can see there, I just got them from Woolies yesterday. If you're going to get them, you don't want ones that are just all bone. You see here, plenty of meat on those all marble with some fat for flavour so get your nice big thick short cut ribs I've got a, eight good ones there bit of, bit of oil just to spray your ribs and obviously we're going to um, do them over the open grill first need a bit of always season with some salt and pepper and for your sauce guy to simmer these um, ribs up in brown sugar some beef stock I've probably got too much there, but at least um, one jar of this chunky medium salsa, all different brands you can get. That's a cheap one from Woolies. So like a Mexican salsa, just medium spice. Sweet paprika. Ground cumin. And here's my second recipe that's got Guinness in it. Any sort of stout beer, but um, I thought I'll get Guinness. Just happened to buy it in a six pack, so I might have to drink one while I'm doing this. But um, that's all you need, guys. That's the ingredients for sticky ribs. You can probably do some rice up also. Um, but yep, yeah, that's all you need for this. So, all right, we'll let this fire burn down and we'll uh, we'll start cooking. Just while we're uh, burning the Oz pig in there, guys, and letting the wood get down to some nice coals and a nice even flame. Obviously, I've got the big camp oven out. I'm going to be doing the camp oven straight on top there but what you'll see me do the optional extra that came with the Auspig is the the grill plate there we're going to grill the ribs first just to brown the outside so we need the grill plate as I said which is an optional extra and something that came with it guys is the defuser now when I simmer these ribs you want to simmer them for about two hours and you want it over a nice even low heat you don't want it to burn too uh, too much, so that's where I'm going to use the defuser today. That came with the Auspig, and that should uh, sit the camp oven on about 180 degrees Celsius, or 350, I think, Fahrenheit. So definitely need the defuser so that we don't burn the arse out of the ribs. I was going to bring the angle out and plug it in, guys, and I thought oh, it's just as easy to bring the old um, my fishing esky out, tropical ice box there. Good insulation on them. As you see, I'll put the Guinness in until I need it. But um, just the frozen 2 and 3 litre, even 1.5 litre bottles there. And um, yeah, you go on camping, guys, for a couple of nights, that's all you need. That's like a, a fridge inside, nice and cool. Anyway, I might crack a Guinness and um, wait for this fire to burn down. 
just while I'm waiting for the fire to burn down. As I said, I was um, going to do this uh, nice little spot just up the highway here, the Palmerston Highway, little national park, and beautiful in the jungle there with a nice little clear stream. And, and I thought, no, I'll get up there, and these clouds, they come in in five minutes flat, and it'll start belting down on me. So anyway, I've hijacked Topper's back shed here and got under cover there so that uh, if it does rain it's not going to wreck my, my cliff but anyway there you go the old Oz pig burning in it's only about one o'clock in the afternoon as I said I normally do this late afternoon but um we're going to go to the club tonight and watch the Mundine and Green fight should be good have a few beers at the club right -o, so I got the ribs out of the packet there guys and what we're going to do is season them up now. The fire's still burning in. But I just want to show you the ribs there. See there? Plenty of meat on them. Bit of fat on the bottom. Bit of marbling of fat throughout the meat. So you really want to get the, the shortcut ribs. And you want to make sure there's plenty of meat on them. So what we're going to do first, just with some uh, olive oil. Give them a bit of a spray with some, some oil. Or you can sprinkle oil on however you want to do it. Just around the edges. Now we're going to always season your meat up, guys. Some salt. Worst thing you can do is not season your meat. Throw some pepper on also. Plenty of seasoning there. And I said I might even throw a bit more. Just... Um, The bottom's all the bone, so you don't really need to season that. But when we put that in the camp oven, that's going to go face down into the um, into the sauce, barbecue sticky sauce. So they'll go face down like that. Okay, so there's no use seasoning the, that. That's all bone on the top there. But have a look at that. Absolutely beautiful. Might give a might put a little bit more salt on the on the sides here, eh? season all right meat seasoned and shortly I think we'll be ready to throw it on the the grill of the ice pig right I you can see there I've got the the grill plate on the ice pig with not too much of a hot flame but I've got some flame going there and um, let that plate get nice and nice and hot I'm gonna throw them face down now what we're going to do guys is we're not actually going to cook these we're just going to get the outside nice and brown I don't know if I'm going to fit them all on for now oh well I've got to do a couple of I'm going to be one short I think that's alright Rafa said give it to me dad I'll have it no I'll fit it on let's reorganize them here here we go last one going on face down there alright Let's sizzle them, and as I said, what I want to do is get the outside of the ribs nice and crispy brown. We don't want to cook them all the way through, because they're going to cook through with the um, the sauce a bit later on. They're going to simmer in the in the camp oven. Righto, do your stuff, Ozpig. Righto, here we go. I'll um, just show you the. That's what we want there. Look at that. See the outside. A bit of smoke going on there. I'll just sit them up on their ends now. Nice crispy outsides. I'll sit the ribs up on their ends. Do the, the sides also. As I said, what we're doing is just sealing the ribs and getting them nice and crispy on the outside, guys. The ice peak's nice and hot at the moment, I'll tell you. See there. Hopefully they'll come up. You can see they're nice and brown on the outside. That's what we want. Seal all the flavour in. We're just a couple of minutes on each side there. Keep sealing them. And then we'll throw them in the in the pot. You're probably copping an eye full of smoke there, guys, but um see how that looks. As I said, you don't want to. You don't want to burn it, 
too much. Just want to seal the outside. Just keep turning them. Look at that, nice and brown on the outside, sealing all that flavour in. Tell you what, there's some heat coming out of that Oz pig, guys. Of um, a little bit crunchy on the outside, but there's nothing wrong with that. That'll add more flavour, I reckon. What I'm going to do, I said I know, I know I said it was a one pot wonder, guys. So I'm just going to put them in my small camp oven here, just to keep uh, warm. The Ambo goes up the road there. Someone had an accident by the sounds of it. Anyway, I reckon they're sealed enough on the outside. Let's throw them in a small camp oven. And we'll get on with the sauce. Right, folks, let's get on with the, the sauce. Here we go, first ingredient. Chunky Mexican salsa. So we'll crack that open. I said two cups before, it's actually three cups. One. One and a half. I'm glad I've got two jars because I would have run out otherwise. We'll crack the other one. I'll just throw it all in. How about that? Oh, you don't. First ingredient, the salsa. In it goes. Right, there's a big waft of smoke comes out. Brown sugar, guys. I'm sure you carry a bit of brown sugar in your forby. You can use it for your coffee if you have to. Quarter of a cup of this if you can get it out. I mean, sitting in the sitting in the fridge, he's a bit sticky. Right, a quarter of a cup of brown sugar, in that goes. Right, next thing, sweet paprika, two tablespoons. One and two. Make sure you get the sweet paprika, not the hot paprika. And the next one, guys, ground cumin. Great and chili con carne, this too. Cumin, it's the magic ingredient. One, and two tablespoons of cumin. So, righto, that's the start of the sauce. We'll give that a mix. And then uh, once that comes to a simmer, we'll put in some more ingredients. Righto, you see that um, sauce is just starting to simmer now. It's melted the brown sugar, and the sweet paprika, and the, um, Cumin's all through that. So that's the start of your sauce, guys. You bring that to the simmer, dissolve that brown sugar. Next thing I'm going to do, and I forgot to mention this before, get some onion, about a, one big brown onion, just sliced up a bit, and about 10 to 12 cloves of garlic. I'm going to throw that in now. Tell you what, guys, I'm up against it today. The GoPro just went flat, and I went to grab my iPhone, and it was flat, so... I I'm working against time here, but anyway, next thing, two cups of beef stocks, in we go. One, I'll fill this one up again. Two cups there, bit of spillage, that won't hurt. In that goes, and bring that to the simmer again, and then in goes the final ingredient, besides the ribs. Right, now for the Guinness, guys. In goes a good can of Guinness. Now, as this cooks, as you know, if you've watched me beef and Guinness stew, it reduces down, gets into a nice sweet, make, turns that into a nice sweet, sticky sauce with all the sugar in the Guinness. But in that goes. Right, what we'll do now is bring that to the simmer, and then in go the ribs. Right, guys, the sauce has started to simmer. It's gone a nice dark colour. That's what we want. Time to put the ribs in. Meat side down, remember? Not bone side down, meat side down. Throw them all in. We're going to let these simmer away for a couple of hours in this nice sauce. And hopefully make this beef really, really tender. Well, that's the, that's the idea anyway. I'll tell you what, guys. Cooking over an Oz pig in summer has got knobs on it. It's I'm sweating my ass off here. But anyway, we'll get there. One more to go in. Okie doke, there we go. Ribs are in. Right oh, let's get the let's get the old lid back on. Lids on. What we want to do now 
just a nice gentle flame, nothing too hot. We've got the defuser on. We're going to let this simmer away for a couple of hours now and um, get that beef really, really tender. All right, see you in a couple of hours, eh? Righto, guys, just over halfway through now. You can see there I've got the Ozpig down nice and low just to simmer away. You don't want any big flames. Might throw another little bit of wood in a minute, just to get a bit more bit more than that. But we're about, oh, just over halfway through now. I'll just grab my tongs there. And it's starting to look good. The sauce is thickening up nicely. That's starting to feel nice and soft. So anyway, lid back on. I reckon another hour or so of just simmering away. And we'll see how we go. Righto guys, it's done. We're about to serve up. We've come out the back paddock now and the rain's gone for a bit so it's bloody hot this afternoon in the house so I thought we'll come out and get the nice breeze in the, out in the back paddock and that so one thing is a spare rib for Rafa. Where are you bud? Rafa, here. I gave him one yesterday and he just stripped it bare within about 20 minutes. He loves them. But anyway, I cheated a bit. I got the... Um, did the rice in the rice cooker but come in here Ross have a look at the ribs have a look at this guys the sauce is thickened up nicely still a bit runny which is good for your rice and that meat I just tested it before it is super soft can't wait to get into that anyway let's dish it up and we'll give it the taste test right I will dish some rice up first guys nice and fluffy out of the, the rice cooker I was going to do it on the Oz pig but it's too bloody hot. I've been sweating all afternoon. I'll tell you what, North Queensland is not the place to cook over an open fire in summertime. Uh, winter time, beautiful, but summertime. Anyway, we'll dish Ross's up here. She's. I was trying to film by myself during the clip, so it was a bit hard. Anyway, that enough rice, Ross? Righto. Righto, let's go with some... Uh, some nice ribs, some nice, look at that there, if you come in nice and close, Ros, you can see how um, how spongy that is, those ribs, eh? Looks really good, really, really soft. I'll put another one on. I'll tell you what, they are, they look really good. I'll just leave that there and we'll get some, some zura or some sauce. The uh, onion and garlic base there, we'll sprinkle it over. Got to have a bit of sauce on your rice, guys, or it's a bit dry, but look at that. A little bit more. Anyway, that's Roz's. Not a bad looking feed. We'll dish mine up and we'll do the taste test. Righto. Right, guys, here we are. The moment of truth, the taste test. Well, um, as I said, look at that. Nice and nice tender beef. You can really taste the salsa in it. You know, if you've ever had Mexican food and that, eh, the salsa, but look at that there, that's just falling apart. That beef there, look at that. Falling apart. Not bad, it's not like your um, your normal smoky barbecue sauce that you normally have with ribs. It's a bit different, but it's, uh, it's certainly nice. The onion and the garlic gives it a nice flavor. Look at this. This is the best bit. Look at that. Look at how tender that beef is, guys. Oh, Rafa's eyeing it off. Yeah, I'll give it the thumbs up. Actually, two thumbs up. That's really nice. About two and a half hours in the camp oven. I'm still sweating. But, um, yeah, that, they're good ribs, guys. A eh? really good recipe. Nice and simple. Just a one-pot meal when you're out camping. So, anyway... Ros will put the camera down now and we'll get stuck into this. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the clip and we'll do another one soon, eh? A paella's next. Buddy, chicken and... What's it called, Ros? Chorizo. Chicken and chorizo paella. That's the next one on the Oz Peak. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm going to finish this off and probably give a bit to Rafa. Catch you all later, eh? Well, that's what's left of the ribs, guys. They're bloody beautiful. I'll, um, I'll give myself a pat on the back for that one. They turned out really good. Give it a go, it's not too hard. Just a one pot wonder and um, two and a half hours, just simmer them away and they come out absolutely beautiful. But anyway, 
time to sit back, enjoy the view. A few rain clouds around, but a beautiful cool breeze, which I needed after cooking on the Oz Peak in the afternoon. But time to rehydrate with a great northern and take in the view. Catch you next time, mate. Eh? See ya.